The great horned owl is a fascinating bird with many unique adaptations. Known for their power and stealth, these birds are often regarded with mystery as they are not easily seen. Their large stature and piercing yellow eyes command respect from all who gaze upon them. The owl's hooting in the dark of night creates a feeling of intrigue and curiosity. Whether seeing or hearing them, witnessing such a majestic creature is always a special and significant event. This fearless predator, known as Bubo virginianus, sits at the top of the food chain and is a widespread resident of the Americas, inhabiting elevations up to tree line. The great horned owl is incredibly versatile and flexible when it comes to habitat selection. It's content to make its home in a variety of terrain, including deciduous and coniferous forests, secondary growth woodlands, swamps, deserts, orchards, agricultural areas, wooded parks, and suburban areas. As you can see, they're not picky. Their home usually has wide open spaces nearby, such as fields, wetlands, or pastures, where prey are abundant. There are a few other owl species that look similar to the great horned owl. When doing owl identification, pay attention to the eye color, bill color, presence of ear tufts, and the size and shape of the facial disc. Note the great horned owl's large yellow eyes, its black bill, and the shorter and wider facial disc compared to that of the great gray owl, the barred owl, and the long-eared owl. Lastly, notice how the great horned owl has a bulkier size than the others. Great horned owls have a few different types of vocalizations. Most notable of these is their hooting, which announces their territory to other great horned owls in the area. Sometimes a male and female breeding pair will perform a duet, taking turns hooting. Notice how the male's hooting is a deeper pitch and the female's is higher. Even though the male is smaller than the female, the deeper hoot is due to having a larger voice box or syrinx. Owlets make a high-pitched screeching sound when begging their parents for food. Adults also make a similar sound when defending their nest. Great horned owls make a variety of other sounds, such as whistles, barks, shrieks, coos, or cries. They may also snap their bills defensively if a predator or a human approaches them or their young. The great horned owl is equipped with many features that facilitate it being a top-of-the-line predator. The horns, which give the owl its namesake, are sometimes mistaken for the owl's ears, but they aren't ears at all. They are simply tufts of feathers known as plumicorns. That's a neat word that translates literally to feathered horns. These feather tufts help break up the owl's outline. They also mimic the shape of tree branches, helping it to blend right into its surroundings. In addition, the color and pattern of the feathers look just like tree bark, giving them remarkable camouflage. The owl's ears are actually located on the side of its head and are asymmetrical with the right ear sitting slightly higher than the left. This helps them to triangulate sound and accurately identify the location of prey. It is estimated that gray horned owls can hear 10 times better than humans can. Not only can it hear a mouse under a foot of snow, it could hear a mouse on the forest floor 900 feet away as well, and likely much further than that. Hidden behind the dark lines of an owl's face is a semi-rigid yet flexible flap of skin known as the facial disc. This helps channel sound to its asymmetrical ears. Great horns can actually raise the feathers on the facial disc to help amplify sound. This is similar to putting your hands behind your ears so you can hear better. Great horned owls have the largest eyes of all owl species, which are a striking bright yellow. 
Have you ever watched a nature show and seen an owl bobbing its head side to side or turning its head sideways or upside down? There's a good reason why it's doing that. We humans keep our head still and we can move our eyes all around to track something. But with great horns, it's the complete opposite. Their eyes are fixed in their sockets and don't move. Therefore, they have to move their heads all around to look at an object and calculate depth. Great horned owls have binocular vision and very little peripheral vision. This is advantageous for hunting prey, but not helpful when it comes to seeing what's beside or slightly behind them. For example, if an owl flies down to pick up prey that was near the side of the road, it may not be able to see an approaching car in time to get out of the way. Their eyes contain rods for seeing in low light and cones for seeing color. They have many more rods, however, allowing them to see very well at night. Their ability to see color is quite limited. They are crepuscular, meaning that they prefer to hunt during dusk and dawn, so color vision really isn't needed so much anyway. In addition, their visual acuity is triggered by movement and sound, which makes sense for a nocturnal bird. Also, their eyes are more cylindrical than they are round. Tubular shaped eyes means that there's more distance between the lens and the retina, so the eye acts like a telephoto lens for being able to see farther distances. Because of being farsighted, their up-close vision is blurry, and they depend on the fine, hair-like feathers around their beaks and feet to feel their food. Great horned owls are able to twist their heads 270 degrees. There's a good reason why we can only turn our heads as far as we can. If we could turn our heads like an owl, we'd cut off circulation to our brains, which would be very damaging. Great horns have 14 vertebrae in their necks, whereas we only have seven. In addition, they have specialized blood vessels in their necks that allow for uninterrupted blood flow to the brain when they turn their heads. Also, the holes in their cervical vertebrae, where the blood vessels pass through, are larger, making a three-quarter head turn possible. That is some incredible avian engineering right there. The great horned owl's feathers are extremely soft. The edge of their feathers are fringed, which helps break up turbulence, giving them the ability to fly silently. Silent flight allows it to hear prey and keep its presence unknown. It's a pretty safe bet that when it swoops down to pick up prey, it never even heard or saw it coming. A great horned owl has thick legs, strong feet, and long, sharp talons. It's common to think of a bird's bill as the part you want to stay away from, and in some cases, this is correct. But for birds of prey, it's the other way around. It's their feet that you want to stay away from, as this is what they use to kill prey. Their beaks are used for tearing food after their feet have acquired their next meal. Not only are their talons as sharp as knives, but their grip strength is formidable too. Their feet have a grip strength of approximately 300 pounds per square inch. To put this into perspective, a human has a grip strength of 60 pounds per square inch. Yep, an owl's grip strength is five times more than that of a human. Some sources I came across in my research even said that the great horned owl has a grip strength of 500 pounds per square inch. Just incredible. They also have a locking ratchet-like mechanism in their feet, which keeps their feet locked around a perch or prey without the need for the muscles to remain contracted. Great horned owls have zygodactyl feet, which means that they have two toes pointing forward and two toes facing backwards. Unlike some birds with zygodactyl feet, they can pivot one of their back toes forward, helping them to perch and grasp prey. When they reach out with their feet fully extended, it can cover 31 square inches of space. That's a lot. So sharp talons, a vice-like grip, and silent flight, and you have yourself the recipe for a feathered ambush predator. Remember when I said earlier that gray horned owls aren't picky about their habitat? Well, the same goes for their food. They will eat just about anything, and I mean anything, even mammals that are larger than they are, and even other owls. They are true opportunists. Some of the animals on their menu include rabbits, hares, mice, American coots, voles, moles, shrews, rats, gophers, chipmunks, squirrels, woodchucks, marmots, prairie dogs, bats, skunks, house cats, 
Porcupines, ducks, loons, mergansers, grebes, rails, owls, hawks, crows, ravens, doves, starlings, scorpions, geese, raptors, shall I go on? Sometimes they supplement their diet with reptiles, insects, fish, and vertebrates, and sometimes even carrion. While they are typically crepuscular hunters, they will occasionally hunt during the night or during the day. Their style of hunting is to locate their prey from a branch that overlooks open woodlands, meadows, or fields. Once they lock in on the location, they dive from their perch and ambush their prey. One curious fact about the great horned owl is that they are some of the earliest birds to breed in North America. They begin defining territory and courting in the fall, and mates are selected between December and January. Most birds wouldn't think of building a nest and laying eggs as the temperatures get colder, but the great horned owl does, and for good reason. Nesting early gives them a competitive advantage over other birds, as it allows them first pick of nest sites. And second, being that great horned owls are large birds, the whole process of incubating eggs and raising young takes a much longer time than it would for a smaller bird. By starting early, it gives the young owls plenty of time to grow up, learn to fly and hunt, while prey are the most plentiful. Great horned owls typically nest in trees such as cottonwood, juniper, beech, and pine, though they will also take up residence in tree cavities, deserted buildings, cliff ledges, or human-made platforms. They don't make their own nests, but take over those that were built by others, namely red-tailed hawks, great blue herons, crows, or ravens. They line the nest with bark, leaves, feathers that they plucked from their own breast, fur or feathers from prey, and even trampled pellets. Great horned owls typically mate for life and keep their pair bonds strong by performing hooting duets throughout each night and especially at twilight. It also helps to reinforce that this is their territory to the other great horns in the area. They have one brood per year and lay one to four eggs and incubate the eggs for four to five weeks. The female does most of the incubating while the male watches over her and brings her food. If she wants to turn at hunting, he takes over incubation duties while she's out catching a meal. The chicks hatch covered in white down and with their eyes closed. It is crucial to their survival to have one parent with them at all times to keep them warm in the cold temperatures. The owlets won't be able to take flight until about 10 weeks of age. With all the time needed for courting, territory and nest acquisition, incubation and rearing of young, it makes sense that they start as early as they do. With the hunting prowess of the great horned owl, you may wonder if there are any predators or threats that they have to deal with. What creature, if any, is this mighty owl afraid of, and why? Well, they really aren't afraid of anyone, and they don't have any predators, though they do have some challenges that come up now and then. The first is a behavior known as mobbing. Mobbing is when birds such as blue jays or crows harass a bird of prey by calling loudly, swooping down around it, flying alongside it, pretty much doing anything they can do to call attention to it. Since predators rely on the element of surprise to succeed, mobbing disarms them by blowing their cover and hopefully driving the predator to a safe distance. Where I live, I once saw a great horned owl in a tree and a blue jay going from branch to branch around the owl calling out loudly. It just wouldn't let up. It may have been doing this if the owl was too close to the blue jay's nest or chicks, or just to alert other birds in the area to the owl's presence. Other threats that great horned owls face are due to human activity. This includes illegal hunting, getting caught in traps if the owl is down on the ground, eating prey that has been poisoned, getting injured from power lines, car strikes, or barbed wire. We need connection to the natural world, and taking care of the creatures that live here is so important. They deserve consideration, as choices we make greatly affect them too. So, those are some of the highlights of the incredible Great Horned Owl. What was the favorite thing that you learned? Have you ever heard or seen a Great Horned Owl where you live? Let me know in the comments section below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and happy birding.